and we are racing once again here at Imola with the European Le Mans series in 2022. An absolutely terrific start for Lorenzo Colombo, but a nightmare for the 27 that's been started by Jean Ludovic Foubert. And the second place man, Julian Canal, has his hands full. Nicholas Cruton trying to go around the outside into Tamburello. Can he make that stick? Cruton doesn't get there and instead goes up and over the kerb and loses the position to Duncan Tappy in the 22 United Order Sports car. So Tappy up to third and Cruton, uh, full marks for bravery, but he's lost a spot. Here comes on the inside the Algarve Pro Racing car of Ben Fiscal and Memo Rowe has to repay the favour. Brilliant racing at Rivazza. Great stuff, great move from Fiscal, but Memo Rowe has just said, OK, you can have that and I'll take it back. Away we go again. And Fiscal tucked in behind here. It's a good place here to make pace count. These cars, remember, mechanically identical. But it's all about the way in which the teams look after the package. This time up the inside and beautifully done. Trouble for Paris Racing, that car's gone around. Second place, second place in the race for Julian Canal, and he's lost that to Duncan Tappy, Nicholas Cruton, and the rest of them all go through as far down as Ben Hanley and now Sally Yolich as well. It's Michael Fassbender's Proton Competition Porsche, which presumably has also been involved at Toza. And it's beginning to disassemble itself. So Porsche into the rear of Ferrari, maybe, or a spinning Ferrari that the Porsche couldn't avoid. So the car ahead is Pierre Eret. We're heading into Toza turn seven. Eret will get uh, a real tank slapper on. Oh, oh dear me. He just didn't accelerate out of the corner. There was nothing that Michael Fassbender could have done about that. No. Habsburg, can he make the corner? We've seen places reversed through the second of the Rivazas, but that's not going to be the case this time for car number nine, which is up a position to fourth place. Habsburg overtaking Alessia Rivera. Two LMP3s are the next little hurdle that this gaggle of three oh. LMP2s have to get by. And remember the P3s are having four abreast at Toza and the number nine car is off onto the grass and losing more places. Through will go Patrick Pile benefiting from all of that. Yep. And by the way, just before that, car nine was being warned about respecting track limits. Trouble then for the 88 car after what has been a very pacey run. And what has gone awry there? No sign of contact. As we got side to side here with Habsburg and Pile. And that was all because of Pile's slight error at Varianti oh. Alta. They're side to side contact. They were trying to make room for one another. And Pile uh, going through Rivazza corner really needed that outside lane to run towards. He was trying to give Ferdinand Habsburg space. But when you put yourself there on the outside line, you're always vulnerable to something like that happening. So Rahal Fry, after an awesome stint for Sarah Bovey, has a tyre let go, or is that as a result of some contact? Well, the rear right's gone bang. Villeneuve chicane's an awkward one as well. Johnny Adam, though, looking slightly more manoeuvrable, and they're going to go side by side here. Sander Hahn will be wise to allow Johnny Adam through. Oh, it was Obrey for an, wall. an attempted move on. Chiodomo. Chimodomo in 31 for TDS. And that was an audacious manoeuvre, trying to force the issue a little bit. Was that Gabby Obrey? So Delatras, I think, will be in, not at the end of this lap, but the one after that, to make it a 24-lap stint. Thomas Laurent looking to the outside. He caught the grass, but that wasn't the moment. It was up the inside. And he then sort of half-heartedly maybe backed out of it, wasn't fully alongside, and Richard Bradley spins as a result. Green is coming now. And it's oh, he's going. got him! He's got him! He's got him up the inside. You know why that was? Because the 47 of James Allen went nowhere. No. Uh, got can't it back. get it done, can't get it done, but that was perfectly within Jot van Outert's rights to get alongside Yifei Ye, but it didn't quite work out. 
And that was all down to, remember, each individual driver has been counted down by the radio out of that full course yellow. It's how quickly they react. And for some reason, James Allen just didn't go anywhere. Habsburg, exceptional, uh, yeah. made a mistake. I think, Fer I think Ferdy knows what's about to happen. Oh, he, he doesn't want to speak did. too soon. Absolutely right. Uh, but great stuff from Prima Racing. Massively so for the two big Italian teams that have combined this year in the European Le Mans series. Prima Racing, backed by Iron Lynx. They take the win here at Imola, the first of our two Italian races in 2022. And in the most unlikely of circumstances, Louis Delatraz, Ferdinand Habsburg and Lorenzo Colombo are victorious. Prima Racing take the win and uh, he deserves to be just as happy okay, as the three drivers and uh, the team representative who are on the top step of the podium. Four trophies, four bottles of champagne about to be cracked open and a delightful start for again a debut team. WRT did this last year, started yep. so so well and Prima Racing rock up. Yes, with so much experience in other disciplines within motorsport and ably assisted by Iron Lynx in um, what, uh, you know, it's two super teams combining. So maybe we shouldn't be surprised by this run of results. Sally Yolich, Charlie Eastwood, Jack Aitken, Victors again. The Goodyear caps are repositioned and they're about to spray the champagne as winners of the Pro-Am category. I'm going to correct an error, by the way, from Paul Rickard uh, with apologies to CF Sports. Uh, I did mention us, we've got a little bit of... Uh, premature uncorkage there. Uh, did say that uh, last time they were there assisted uh, technically by TF Sport. That was last year. This year, all in house at TF Sport. So, all credit beyond the three drivers to Tom Ferrier's crew back in the south of England. And we've got more of that to come with a completely different national anthem and a brand new one for the European Le Mans series and indeed for uh, ACO Rules Racing ever coming a little later in these podium celebrations. 1-2 for Oman, staggering. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a prouder man in the place than Ahmed al -Harty. And by the way, he played a full part in that. Oh, entirely. He, he laid the foundations for that result, and well done, sir. And that was not, not an easy stint, as he was able to illustrate so efficiently uh, earlier on to Hayley Edmonds, because that's when the pressure was on yeah. from the 83 Iron Dames car. Uh, and Sarah Bovey, who um, drove an exemplary stint as well. And by the way, great stuff too from the second place Aston Martin crew. And let's pick up the big man, John Hartshaw, sitting in the middle there on the second uh, rung of the podium. Uh, a man who just loves his racing and ably backed up by his two pro colleagues there. Third, of course, the Castle Racing team, Takeshi Kimura. Great to see our Japanese friends uh, back out and racing Mikkel Jensen. There will be more from Mikkel in Sports Car Racing News later in the week that follows this one. That's the national anthem for United Order Sports. Graham's got some breaking news in a moment, but I'd just like to pay credit to the guys involved with Car 27 because Nicola Molini, Anton Ducan, and Jean Ludovic Foubert. Remember those replays we were having of the race start? Yes. Foubert was the one oh. going right and towards the wall. So a horror start. They still finished the race in second place. We'll be back racing again here in Italy in July with the four hours of Monza. So be sure to join. Bye-bye for now.